Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Alexis Smith, Miriam Hopkins, and Otto Kruger in Old Acquaintance. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When opening night on Broadway reveals a new dramatic hit, that's only the first step in a familiar pattern. The next stage is spirited bidding among the Hollywood studios for the picture rights. The third step is one we try to take care of. Making the drama's path of glory lead right to the Lux Radio Theater. Tonight's play proves the point. John Van Druten's drama, Old Acquaintance, had a long run on Broadway. Warner Brothers made the picture success, and this evening... Old acquaintance holds the spotlight here with Miriam Hopkins, Alexis Smith, and Otto Kruger. We asked Mrs. Hopkins to cut short a New York vacation to play the same part with us she played on the screen. And Alexis Smith comes to us direct from her hit performance in the Warner Brothers picture, The Adventures of Mark Twain, which Jesse Lasky produced. Old acquaintance turns the playwright's magnifying glass on the emotions of two women and picks out the amazing story that's concealed under the fame and fortune and happiness that appears on the surface. About this time every year, I turn judge for a while, an odd job for a producer, but it happens to tie in very well with producing plays that are backed by Lux Toilet Soap. The judging in this case is not in law or equity, but in beauty. Along toward graduation time, students of uh, schools and colleges sometimes ask me to take my life in my hands by selecting the most beautiful girl in the graduating class. I've never heard of the decision leading to a campus war yet, but it might. Because with each group of photographs that come in, it's harder to say that one girl is the loveliest. Perhaps it's all the fault of Lux Toilet Soap. Because the popularity of Lux seems to be going up along with the national beauty average. But it's the curtain that's going up now. And here's the first act of Old Acquaintance. Starring Alexis Smith as Kit, Miriam Hopkins as Millie, and Otto Kruger as Preston. It was a big year, 1924. Calvin Coolidge was elected president. The Prince of Wales toured the United States. And the hit tune was, Yes, sir, that's my baby. It was also the year that a book by a pretty young writer named Kit Marlowe won every award that a really fine novel can receive. Hello? Hello? Oh, I thought we'd been cut off. Now, for heaven's sakes, kid, don't miss the train. Remember, you're a celebrity. Well, of course you are. And every seat in town hall's been sold for your lecture. Millie, hey, Millie. Oh, kid, it's going to be so wonderful seeing you. What train will she be on? Oh, wonderful. Oh, what train will you be on? 11-5? 11-5. All right, darling. Well, I can't help being excited. Yes. Yes, of course. Goodbye, darling. Oh, Kit, wait. I've something wonderful to tell you. I'm... Hello? Hello? She's hung up. Oh. Millie Drake is always excited on the long-distance telephone, but she's never had better reason to be. Kit Marlowe is her dearest friend, and Kit Marlowe is coming to Birchfield to visit her. Yes? Hello. Hello. Well, say, you must be... Mm Mm-hmm. You're Preston? Yes, but, well, come in, come right in. Oh, thanks. It seems there was something of a riot at the railroad station, and I've lost Millie. Oh, a riot, huh? A mild one. I was kidnapped by young America, college girls, I guess. It seems my book must have created something of a disturbance. You're darn right it is. Oh, your bag. Thanks. You know, they were determined to haul me off to school right then and there to defend my points of view or something. You didn't go, huh? No, I sliced through tackle, found a taxi, and here I am. Well, uh, how about a drink? Oh, no. Puts me to sleep. And I have a lecture to give. Oh, that's right. Say, oh, I wonder where Millie is. I don't suppose she had a chance to uh, tell you the news. Uh... News? Yeah, we've uh, got a little something on the way. No! A baby? <laughs> oh, why not? Why not? Why, ever since I've known Millie, the good things of life seem to make their way carefully to her. Does that include me? You look all right. You do, too. Oh, thank you, Preston. Oh, look. 
Isn't that Millie now, driving up? Yeah. Oh, oh Kit, uh, she's going to be pretty sore if she wasn't here to welcome you. Uh, maybe you ought to make a new entrance. Oh, what an idea. No, no, really. No, it'll make her laugh. Just just slip out there, and, and when she comes in, you just pop in again, huh? Well, that's not too complicated, I suppose. Go on, go on, hurry. Hello, Millie. Where's your guest? I don't know, and I don't care. I've never been so shamed in my life. Huh? Oh, leave me alone. Why, you don't even treat a stranger like that, let alone your best friend getting mixed up with those silly college girls while I stand there making a fool of myself. Oh, so you saw her. <laughs> oh, no hat, no makeup, a hair all over the place. I'm sure if she were a man, she'd have needed a shave. Oh, oh n- now, honey, the, the doctor said you shouldn't excite yourself. Oh, I know. But after I'd gone to all this trouble and... What's that? What's what? Uh-oh. She's here. That's her bag. She's here. Oh, oh now look. Now, Mel. Mel. Come on, where's your sense of humor? It, 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 oh, never a dull moment. I guess not. Huh? Oh, Kit. Oh, come on now, Millie. Well, listen, if it's just a little, we wanted to surprise you. And we, uh, Millie, now here's Kit. Aren't you going to welcome her? Same old Millie. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. What did she mean I looked as if I needed a shave? Oh, <laughs> don't let it worry you. I- I'm very partial to girls who don't shave. <laughs> Preston, we just can't leave her up there bathed in tears. Shall I go up? Oh, I'd sure appreciate it, Kit. Of course. All right, now I'll, I'll tell Hilda that uh, we'll be eating in a few minutes. I'll bet you're dying. <laughs> Millie. <laughs> Millie. <laughs> Millie, remember you're a hostess and you have a guest. Oh, have a heart, Millie. It was only a joke. Oh, well, I suppose I can go to a hotel. Perhaps you should. You certainly don't act as though you wanted to see me. Millie, what could I do? I couldn't get away from those Amazons as easy as that. Oh, uh, I like your husband, Millie. Mm-hmm. You were quite right. He is easy on the eyes. He's all right, I suppose. And you have a lovely home. And it was awfully nice of you to go to so much trouble for my visit. Oh, Millie, and it's so wonderful you're going to have a baby. <gasps> Oh, I couldn't even tell you that myself. Well, what does it matter as long as it's true? And I know. It matters to me. But you have so much to be happy for. You should be very thankful. Oh, naturally, I'm happy. And, uh, I'm not mm-hmm. sure I don't envy you a little. Oh, kid. Kid. I'm... Really, I'm glad you're here. I've behaved just awfully, haven't I? I understand, darling. Oh, kid. And I've arranged a little party for you tonight. <laughs> you gave me a brief warning on the to- telephone. After the lecture. Oh, not too many. Just the people I thought you'd like to see again. Thank you, Millie. You know, you're wonderful. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Oh, I'm so glad you liked it. Hey, Millie, Charlie's serenading a lamppost. I better drive him home. Oh, dear. Well, hurry back, Fred. Good night, everybody. Kit, I'm dead. Oh, my. Well, we'd better not sit down. There's something of a mess to be cleared up. Oh, Hilda can handle it, and Preston will be home in a few minutes to help. Come on, let's go to bed. Let's. Oh, it was a beautiful party, Millie. Thank you. Don't think I didn't love every minute of it. It was my friend who stood them on their ears at town hall. Kit, you shot. You should hear me sometime when I really bear down. They loved you. Well, I'm sure everyone here had a good time. They certainly ate enough, didn't they? (laughs) Be sure to say goodnight to Preston for me. Oh, he'll be right back. It must be nice having a nice man coming right back. Yes, a husband can be a great comfort at times. Kit, I'm dying to talk to you. Let's flop on the bed. Oh. What are you going to do about that, Kit? About a husband. Well, right now I'm concentrating on another book. But about men, I mean. Is there anyone? I haven't noticed anyone. You're not engaged or anything? What do you mean, or anything? But you're not? No. Oh. (laughs) I'm rather surprised. So am I. You know, Kit, I had a real pang of envy when I read about all your success. But then I got to thinking that... Being just a housewife has its compensation. I'm sure it has. Of course, there are people who can have both a career and a life. Millie, you're holding out on me. Now, what have you been up to? Yes, there is something. Oh, Kit, promise me you won't breathe a word, not even to Preston. And, Kit, please don't laugh. I won't. Well, when your book came out, well, something happened. 
Oh, it wasn't jealousy. I'm above jealousy. You know that. But I said to myself, here's Kip writing a sad, almost sordid analysis of two people's lives and getting marvelous write-ups and becoming a celebrity overnight. Well, not quite overnight, but I... And here I am, little Millie Drake, just bubbling over with a message of quite another sort. You didn't like my book? Oh, I did. But I don't think it's what people really want. Well, you're probably perfectly right, Millie, because in spite of the reviews, it's not selling. Oh, isn't it really? No. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. But you see, that's what I mean. Millie, what are you trying to tell me? That you've written a book? Well, why not? Kit, you aren't the only one who can write a book. Well, Millie, darling, I know, but... Wait. Your eyes, other than mine, will be the first to look down upon my first novel. Why, Millie! It's about a boy named Lionel and a wonderful girl, Deirdre. I think it's a beautiful name, don't you? Oh, Kit, will you read it? And if you like it, will you take it to your publishers? Of course I'll read it. Honest? And I've another one all dreamed out already. It's about a girl named Laverne. Oh, Kit, if there's anything in beauty, then the beauty-loving world has got to know my book. It simply laughs and cries with people. Well, I hope people laugh and cry with it, Millie. Oh, I'm sure they will. I don't mean to seem egotistical, but I have read a good deal, Kit, and I think I know what appeals to most people. How'd you think it all up? It just came to me. Kit... I really believe I was born to it. Once I stopped, the words just seemed to pour out of me without my knowing it, like I was in a trance or something. Oh, Millie, you're marvelous. It took me two years to write one book. Oh, well, <laughs> it could be that I'm more prolific. <laughs> could be. Uh, Millie, after you've written all these books, what are you going to do with the money? Do you think they'll make money? Do you? Well, your kind of books make a fortune. That tender young love stuff. Oh, I know exactly what I do. I'll buy the old Crimpton house, and then I'll have a secretary and two cars, and when my baby comes, I'll have an English nanny for it, and later a French governess. That is, if it's a girl. Oh, you've got everything planned out, haven't you, Millie? <laughs> well, of course, it's only a dream, but it's a lovely dream. <gasps> Success is thrilling, isn't it, Kit? I guess so, Millie. <laughs> but it's funny how soon you get used to it. I always want more and more. Don't you want to go on and on to bigger things? Oh, I don't know about bigger things. Other things, perhaps. Such as? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'd like to write a play. A play? Oh, an opening night must be thrilling. All the people calling, Arthur, Arthur. But you know, Kit, I think I'll just stick to my book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, what's so funny? Millie, you're so wonderful. <laughs> 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 oh, kid, it's like old times, isn't it? Oh, it eat his mama saying, Now, don't you two girls talk all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Millie, remember whenever we were in the dumps, your mother used to say, Don't worry, girls. There's always what's left of the icing. Yes, I remember. Oh, here's Preston. Hey, I'm back. Where are you? Up here. Oh, kid, won't it be marvelous? Two friends, both writers, both such successes. Oh, Millie. My book. I've got it hidden in my room. I'll get it. Can I come in? Come on. Oh, uh, well, everything all right? Oh, fine, thanks. I uh, brought up some ice water this afternoon. It's over there. Oh, I wish you wouldn't bother about me, Preston. Uh, oh, where's Millie? I guess she went to her room. Oh, well, good night. Good night. Oh, uh, uh, thanks about this morning. Oh, that was nothing. Well, uh, uh, fun having you here, Kit. It's fun being here. Yeah. Well, uh, breakfast at ten. Fine. Good night. Hey, good night. Oh, uh, I'll be up in a little while, Millie. What are you going to do? Oh, just sort of clean up a little. Kit, here it is. Oh, it's good and long, isn't it? Oh, I could have gone on and on for twice that length. I'll start it now, darling, tonight. Oh, thank you, Kit. Good night. Then I'll leave you to Deirdre and Lionel. Married in June by Mildred Watson Drake. <laughs> in a few moments, Mr. DeMille presents Miriam Hopkins, Alexis Smith, and Otto Kruger in Act Two of Old Acquaintance. And now, here's the girls' locker room in the big war plant. The day shift is going off. Whoa, where's the fire? Oh, hello, Dot. I am in a hurry. Just 20 minutes to change myself from Rosie the Riveter to my soldier's dream girl. Jim's home on leave, you know. And later... 
Well, seeing is believing. You do look like a dream girl, just as though you stepped out of a very nice sandbox. And your skin, it looks wonderful. What have you done to it? Oh, that's easy, Dot. I always bring along a cake of Lux toilet soap. I just gave myself a Lux beauty facial. Only takes a minute, and it does the trick every time. It's true. Smart girls everywhere find this easy Lux soap facial gives skin new freshness so quickly. Here's all you do. You cover your face with lots and lots of the creamy Lux soap lather, work in gently but thoroughly, then rinse with warm water and splash on cold. Pat dry with a soft towel. Now your skin feels soft and smooth, looks so fresh. In recent tests of these Lux toilet soap facials, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time. Famous screen stars depend on this care. Use it every day. For a fresher, lovelier complexion, why don't you try it? Ask your dealer for this gentle white soap tomorrow. If he's temporarily out of stock, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Hollywood's beauty soap is worth waiting for. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of Old Acquaintance. Starring Alexis Smith as Kit, Miriam Hopkins as Millie, and Otto Kruger as Preston. It's eight years later. Eight years that have witnessed the uninterrupted output of that incredible literary assembly line, Mildred Watson Drake. In her capacity for mass production and making money, Millie has far outdistanced Kit Marlowe. But the friendship of the two so totally different authors has endured and flourished. Now, in a lavish New York apartment, a newspaper reporter is waiting to interview Millie. I'm sure Mrs. Drake will be back any minute. She's been out shopping. Oh, I'll wait. But you were about to say something about your wife's first book. Oh, only that it was published the same day as our little girl was born. And that was how long ago, Mr. Drake? Well, uh, dear, dear, it'll be eight next month. Well, it must have been eight years ago. There's been one every year since. Huh? Yeah. All of the books, Miss Carter, not children. There's only, only one child. Oh. Her books have all been such great successes. And uh, you sort of manage her affairs, I suppose? No, no, I work, too. Sort of an architect and engineer. Uh, if you don't mind, though, no mention of me. Mr. Drake, wasn't that Kit Marlowe who came in a few minutes ago with your daughter? Yes. You see, we're really in town in the opening of her play tonight. We don't use this apartment very often, but uh, nothing could keep us away from Kit's play. She's one of the family. She's, you know, she's swell. Oh, oh that reminds me. Uh, Kit. Hey, Kit. Yes? Uh, there was a phone call for you. Hello. Uh, the, yeah, the theater called about a half hour ago. Oh, thanks. I'd better see what they want. Lots of luck with your play, Miss Marlowe. Oh, excuse me, uh, Miss Carter of the News Post. Thank you, Miss Carter. Well, Press, I don't suppose you caught more than a glimpse of your daughter's new outfit as we came in. No, but from what I saw, wow. Oh, Kit, you shouldn't have done it. Why not? I enjoyed it. You see, Miss Carter, this sort of thing has been going on between Miss Marlowe and Deirdre for years. Well, Deirdre is really partly mine anyway. I was at the hospital when she was born. As a matter of fact, she gave me her first smile. Her mother said it was gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must be Mrs. Drake now, Miss Carter. I'll tell her you're here. Where's Millie Press? Oh, she's still talking to that Carter girl. Took her into the study. Uh, did you call the theater? Uh-huh. Yeah? What's the matter? Not worried about the player? Of course I am. Well, have a drink. It helps. You've had a head start, haven't you? A considerable one. Uh, Kit, will you tell me something? Yes, what? Why are you and Millie such friends? Press, what a thing to ask. Well, I mean it. It can't be just because you were girls together. Well, that counts for more than you think. Besides, I owe Millie a great deal. On my very first day at school, she took me by the hand and brought me home and said to her mother very solemnly, Mama, this is Catherine Marlowe, who's going to be my very best friend. And then when my aunt died, her home was the only really home I ever had. Millie's really all right, Press. Kit, I don't know what I'd have done if you hadn't been around all these years. Just to look at you. Oh, Pooh. I don't have to tell you, do I? I love you, Kit. Press, I... I beg you never to say that again. Oh, Preston, I think Miss Carter may like a highball. We've just finished. I'd love one, but I have to get downtown. Thank you so much, Mrs. Drake. And, Miss Marlowe, I wish I could do a story on you sometime. Oh, she always says she hates publicity. Sometime, perhaps, Miss Carter. Tell me, how is your next book coming? Well, I write and rewrite, and I still don't like it. Well, at least when you do turn one out, it's a gem. None of this grinding them out like sausage. 
Uh, in moments like this, I believe Emily Post advises cutting the throat. There's a knife on the table. Oh, Miss Carter, I'm sure you'll excuse me. We have a million things to do. Thanks. Well, let me help you to the door. I'm sure the sooner you find it, the happier you'll be. Well, thank heavens I don't have to write for literary snobs like her. What difference does it make what she says? I'm proud of my writing. And your books sell? Mine don't. They could. What do you suggest? Publicity. When I was shopping this afternoon, I passed by the theater. Posters all over the place. And your name in little tiny letters. It's just as well. I'm not so sure the play's any good. Now, where would I be with an attitude like that? Where I am, probably. You must remember, Millie, you've never not been sure about anything. I find it far wiser than not knowing or caring what's going to happen next. At our age, Kit, we shouldn't be waving in the breeze like a piece of limp rag. Rather the neatest trick of the week, Miller. Well, you know what I mean. When I want something, I work for it. And when I've got it, I hold on to it like a bulldog. There are some things which can be too tightly held, especially people. People. Outside of Preston, indeed. No one means anything to me. Me too. Oh. <laughs> you go without saying, but you do make me mad. You know, Kit, someday you might be a very lonely old lady. Something I'll never be. I took care of that. You married Preston, you had Deirdre, and you put money in the bank. Well, what bad insurance is there? Millie, why aren't you more considerate of Preston? What on earth do you mean? Certainly you can see how miserable he is. Miserable? Why, haven't I been a good wife to him? I've given him everything. He's as much a definite part in my life as Deirdre is. How can you say he's miserable? Millie, do you know anything at all about men? Do you? Well, I... I know there are a lot of little things that a man expects from a woman that I think in your success you may have forgotten all about. What little things? Oh, little things like humor and charm and tenderness. Oh. Well, should I be charming and humorous and tender when a man consumes nearly a bottle of whiskey in an afternoon? People drink for escape, Millie. Look at this. If you insist upon drinking, my love, I'd better bring you a fresh bottle. Oh, <laughs> There's enough left for a drink if you'd like it, Press. You really think I should? Yes. And I bought you two dinner jacket ties, Preston. The new kind with a single end. Very nice of you, Millie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me. What's the joke? It's Kit. Our Kit is in a very rambunctious mood today. I think I must write a play sometimes and see if I can feel rambunctious. I'm sure you will, Millie. Well, I really have to write. Oh, wait a moment. I've something for you, too. I left it in the hall. For my very best friend to commemorate the first night of her first play. Well, the sun seems to be shining again. Yes. I wonder what caused that. Now, this is for my husband, and this is for Kit. I think when you open it, darling, you'll find it quite charming. Millie! Why, Millie, you can't give me things like this. Why not? I think it's a lovely pin. <laughs> I don't know what to say. And with love from me to me, I bought these clips. Oh, and very nice, too. Yeah, they're <laughs> handsome, Millie. I wish I could afford to have given them to you. You... you resent my having them? I don't resent your having anything. Then why do you sneer? Oh, now be good, Millie, and... and let me see how they look on you. Oh, anyone would think I was... Well, I'll do without them. I'll do without everything. I'll give up writing. We'll go back and pick it in Birchfield the way we used to. Is that what you want? No, Millie, just stay as you are. You can buy me a nice uniform, and on the collar you can put MWD. Property of Mildred Watson Drake in diamonds. Oh, you're drunk. I wish I were. When you want to apologize, I'll be in my room. Press. What? I'm really partly to blame. Before you came in, I, I gave Millie a sort of bawling out. Now go in and tell her you're sorry. And no more of that uniform business. It wasn't kind. Oh, uh, I'll leave your tickets at the box office. Goodbye, Press. See you later. <laughs> Sorry for what I said, Millie. Here are your clips. I found them on the floor. Just drop them in the wastebasket. You didn't pay for them. All right. There. Will you stop playing the fool, Preston, and get dressed for the theater? I'm sorry for one thing. I hate leaving Dee Dee. What did you say? I said I hate leaving my daughter. I'm going away, Millie, just as far away from you as I can get. You don't know what you're talking about. You can't just walk out Oh, and... stop it, please. You're drunk. You, uh, you no don't know what you're scenes. doing. Let's say as you wouldn't when, when your book Why? so ended the chapter in their lives. But, Preston... Oh, goodbye, Millie, and good luck. Oh. Preston. Come in. 
Hello, Press. Oh, Kit, thanks for coming. So, as soon as my back's turned, you just run away to the nearest hotel. Not the nearest. One's a little cheaper. How a grown man can hide away just for the fun of torturing his wife is beyond me. I'm sorry, Kit, but it's over. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Well, how'd the play go? It was all right, I guess. I'll bet it was great. You certainly chose a peach of a time to run out on Millie. I didn't mean to involve you, Kit. There's a party going on at my house. I'm a hostess. I'd like to go back, Press. I'd like you to take me back. I'm leaving town. I wanted to see you first. Press, you simply mustn't do this. Well, you two couldn't have lived together for nine years if there hadn't been ties, strong ties between you. She was once a sweet, pretty little girl, and then she became a success. Kit, you must listen to me now, just for a minute. You mean everything to me. I'm in love with you. I'm deeply in love. I want you to look at me and tell me that you don't feel as I do. I'm never going back to Millie, so don't let that make any difference in what you say. But tell me. Tell me the truth of it. Press, I... I haven't let myself even think about it. Why not? Well, because there are things you just don't do. But this is our one chance for a happy life. An only chance. There's no such thing as an only chance. Life goes on, Press. Millie would stand between us always, spoiling any hope of happiness that we might find. But there are things you just don't do if you want to live decently with yourself afterwards. Well, you're trying to tell me that your friendship for Millie would mean more than your love for me. All I know is that it's something I just couldn't do, whether it's Millie or any other woman who was a friend of mine. I guess it wasn't meant to be, Press. Uh, I'm going to ask Millie to come here. Talk to her, please. Don't just throw away nine years without at least talking to her. I'd do anything for you, Kit. Anything but that. For my sake. Please see her. I'm sorry, Kit. That's one thing I won't do. Well, I guess it's goodbye then. I guess it is. May I kiss you goodbye? No, Press. Goodbye, Kit. Press? Come here. Goodbye. Listen, if you will, Kit. Keep an eye on Deirdre for me. She's such a little girl. And I'd... I'd kind of like her to grow up like you. Thank you, Press. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Miriam Hopkins, Alexis Smith, and Otto Kruger for Act Three of Old Acquaintance. We have a special guest tonight, a charming young lady with a very special talent. Perhaps many of you have already seen her. She is Miss Donna Atwood, skating star of Ice Capades of 1944. Tell us, Miss Atwood, do those skates of yours have wings attached to them? <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Kennedy. They're the conventional figure skates. But to manage them properly takes a good many years of practice including rigid training in ballet. It's fun, though, and I love it. You certainly look as if it agreed with you. Uh, your work involves a good deal of traveling, doesn't it? Oh, yes. During the year, we play 45 weeks in 22 different cities in the United States and Canada. That means we're on the go more ways than one because, well, of course, we have to keep right on practicing. And still look fresh and lovely for your performances. Uh, you told me, Miss Atwood, that Lux Toilet Soap is one beauty care you always have with you. Lots of other lovely ladies tell us that, too. So won't you give us your special reasons for depending on Lux Toilet Soap? Oh, gladly, Mr. Kennedy. Lux Soap gives a wonderful creamy lather, even in localities where we find very hard water. My skin just has to look right, and Lux always leaves it feeling so smooth. Oh, I'm delighted with my Lux Soap facials. They're quick and easy, and they work. <laughs> Incidentally, I'm speaking for most of the girls in the ice capades. They're just as keen about Lux Soap as I am. Well, if I may say so, Miss Atwood... One look at your complexion, and I'm sure everyone would agree that the screen stars are right when they say Lux Soap facials are a real beauty care. Thank you for taking time out before your ice capade performance tonight to come here. Now, there's a beauty tip for all you busy women everywhere. 
from a young lady who can't afford to guess about the complexion soap she uses. Why not get some gentle white Lux toilet soap tomorrow? You'll find it leaves skin looking fresh as a June rose. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. There'll be a curtain call chat with our stars after the play. But now the third act of Old Acquaintance, starring Miriam Hopkins, Alexis Smith, and Otto Kruger. <laughs> Nearly ten years have passed since Preston Drake slipped out of the lives of Kit Marlowe and Millie. They've been kind years to both women. Each has her share of pain. Each has her share of Deirdre, Millie's daughter. And now, just as suddenly as he left, Preston Drake has returned to New York. His first move was to telephone Kit to meet him in the cocktail lounge of his hotel. And then after Mexico, I spent three years in Brazil, and since the first of the year, I've been in Washington. I can't get over it, Pet. It's so good to see you. Good to see you, too, Kit. Another cocktail? No, thanks. They don't still put you to sleep, do they? <laughs> what a memory. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about dear Dick. How has she turned out? Well, I I think you'll be proud of her. And Millie? How's Millie wearing? Well, when Millie was delivered, she was guaranteed for 80 years. She writes, eats, sleeps, all three very heartily. Why don't you call her up, Preston? She'd love to hear from you. All right, I will. Kit, uh, you remember the last time I saw you, you said that uh, life goes on? Yes, I remember. Well, you were right. I found someone, Kit. I'm getting married in the spring. Oh, I'm so happy for you, Preston. And now, hold on to your chair. Huh? I found someone, too. Kit. So help me, Preston. I'm embarrassed. Oh, why on earth, for? I think it's wonderful. Well, so do I, but it seems so unreal. And, of course, there's a catch to it. Oh. Uh, a matter of years. Ten years, to be exact. Older? Younger. You might know there'd be something. Leave it to me. But he's terribly sweet and persistent. Well, he better be. Kit, I've got a great idea. What? Do they know each other? I mean, uh, dear dear, you both? Oh, very well. Why not call him up and... and... Uh, his name is Rod Preston. Rod Kendall. All right, call Rod up and have him pick up Deirdre. And we could all have dinner or something. Oh, of course, Preston. You must be dying to see Deirdre. Oh, I am. And Rod. Well, now, let's see. Uh, Rod's probably still at his office, and Dee Dee... Oh, she's probably got a date with that Lucian Grant person, but that shouldn't be too difficult. But Lucian Grant? You know him? No, but I read the paper. Oh, don't worry, Press. It's nothing serious. Now, if you can get a telephone... Uh, but wait up. Uh, bring me a phone, please. And believe me, Rudd, if this is one of your tricks, I'll never forgive you. Will you pipe down, Dee Dee? And the nerve, coming into the club and talking to Lucian like that in front of all those people. Look, Dee Dee, you and Lucian don't mean a thing to me. I took you away because Kit wants you. Kit wants me? What for? Well, I told you it's a surprise. I don't believe you. Okay, don't. I don't see why Kit should be so concerned about me. Well, neither do I. Oh, look, Dee Dee, don't you know Lucian Grant's no good for you? Here we go again. Well, Kit doesn't like him either, and you ought to respect her judgment. Who says I don't? I do. Well, if you won't drive him back, at least let me stop and phone him. You can phone later. I'm taking no chances, Dee Dee. I said I'd deliver you, and that's just what I'm going to do. Well, there they are. Now behave yourself. Who's that man with Kit? Shh, you'll find out. Hello, Kit. Oh, here you are. Hello, Kit. Hello, Dee Dee. Dee Dee. Uh, Dee Dee, may I introduce you to your father? My father? My father. Come here, darling. And this is Rudd Kendall, Preston Drake. How do you do? Now, Rudd, let's you and I have a dance. They have a lot of, a lot of things to say to each other. Thank you, kid. <sighs> Sit down, Dee Dee. <laughs> Quite a flow, isn't it? Oh, just let me look at you, darling. Kid, I can't complain about your dancing, but you know you're not concentrating on Oh, I'm sorry, Rudd. I was miles away. I was sort of hoping you were thinking about my proposal. What proposal? What proposal? I'm the guy that wants to marry you. Oh, Rudd, you're charming. Well, this afternoon I was sweet, now I'm charming. They both may know, huh? Rudd, I... Well, it's just that so much has happened, so suddenly. Sudden? Oh, Dee Dee's old man, huh? I see. <laughs> Dee Dee's old man. No, you don't see. Kit, promise me just one thing. I'll surely try, Russ. Later on, let me take you home. Alone. 
I have to talk to you. Please, Russ. Please do. And the look on Dee Dee's face when she saw him. Oh, it's good to see people happy, Rudd. And it'd be so easy to see me happy, kid. Sit down. Oh, uh, get you a drink? No, you sit down. Kit. Kit, darling, I- I'm leaving in five days. You're what? I've got a new job. I've been greeted by the president. Rudd. Kit, marry me, will you? Tomorrow. Look, we've been in the war only a few months. There's no telling how long it's going to last, and... Well, if I'm going to keep my mind on my work, you've got to say yes. Well, let me get my breath. Only don't start analyzing again, please. But I'm not any younger than I was when you asked me yesterday. Oh, Kit, please. Let's not go into all of that again. But that's the important part of it. Rudd, listen. You're leaving in five days. You're going to war. But when it's over, let's hope there'll be a wonderful world waiting for young men like you to take hold of and make happy lives for yourselves and everyone else. And that just doesn't make sense with a woman that's ten years older than you are. Think what would it, what it would be like ten years from now. No matter what you say, kid, I want to marry you. Rudd, you make it so difficult for me. Well, you make it so difficult for yourself. Then give me a few days to think it over by myself. Without your distracting presence. Oh, so I'm distracting, huh? Well, at least that's something. <laughs> Darling, don't look like that. I promise to give you my answer before you leave. All right, kid. That's the way you want it. Rudd, I've never been more flattered or so grateful in my life. Not so long ago, you said you loved me. If I didn't, Rudd, there'd be no need to think at all. Oh, what's the matter, Dee Dee? Don't you like the restaurant? Oh, of course, but when I called you up, it wasn't to wang you into inviting me to lunch. Oh, what else? Well, I thought I made it pretty clear on the phone. I was rather nasty the other night when you swept me away from Lucian, and I wanted to apologize. Come on, Dee Dee, what's the matter? Oh, I don't know. Don't mind me, I'm all mixed up. Yeah, you are a little nuts. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I've been a little worked up about something, and, well, I, I shouldn't have taken it out on you. Oh, it doesn't matter. I just wish I were 30 like you. Then I wouldn't have any problems. Oh, that's what you think. You don't mean it's going to go on being as bad as this. Well, I don't know how bad this is. But I do know you're not in love with Lucian Grant. No. It doesn't feel the way I thought being in love would feel. Then wait until it does. Why are you telling me this? Well, I I don't want to see you get hurt. (sighs) Funny. Quite suddenly I can talk to you, Rudd. You've changed. Maybe you had something to do with that. (laughs) Thank you. But you just said I was nuts. Well, there are certain things you can't be immediately articulate about. No, there aren't. Say it. All right, I will. Dee Dee, you're lovely. Now I'm scared. What's going on in that head of yours? <laughs> well, I, I'm contemplating making love to you. And I, I don't quite know how to begin. Come in. Oh, it's you. Who did you think it was going to be? Well, to tell you the truth, Kit, I'm expecting Preston. He phoned this morning. Oh, that's wonderful. Kit, why should Preston want to see me after all these years? Well, I don't really know, Millie. Uh, Perhaps he'd like to talk to you about Deirdre. Kit, do you think I should take him back? What? I said, do you think I should take him back? Oh, Millie, surely Preston told you he's engaged. Oh, yes, but that doesn't mean anything. He's probably just lonely like I am. After all, we were together for so long. It's a great satisfaction to know that in the end, a man does turn back to his wife. Millie, I wouldn't count on it if I were you. But how could you understand? I knew Preston. Oh, kid, I want something more out of life than just books and a discontented daughter. We're not getting any younger, you know. Yes, Millie, I'm quite aware of that. Millie, what would you say if I told you I thought I might be going to get married? Who to? That young Kendall? Yes. What would he be like as a husband? Devoted and enchanting while it lasted. Oh. He's too young for me? Yes. I'd be crazy to marry him. Yes, I think you would. So do I. But I'm going to all the same. (laughs) Well, I just wanted you to know, darling. (laughs) Goodbye, Millie. Stop on your way back. I may have some very interesting news. Millie, you look very pretty today. Same to you, dear. Isn't it marvelous what it does for one? (laughs) (laughs) 
Another scotch and soda, Preston? No, thanks. Two is my limit these days. Well, Millie, I suppose you're wondering why I've come to see you. I think I can guess. I know a great deal about men, Preston. Well, it's just that now that I'm getting married, Millie, I thought perhaps you might be willing to share Dee Dee with me. Oh, that's what you wanted to see me about? Yes. Yeah. I know my fiancée is a bit young to be a stepmother, but, I mean, that's no reason why she and Dee Dee shouldn't be good friends. Oh, no. No. Preston, um, how long have you known this uh, girl? Oh, a year or so far. Well, naturally, I'm concerned about you. We were together for so long, and then ten years, and not even a letter. Well, I had to do it that way, Millie. I had to put you all out of my mind. Dee Dee, you, and Kit, too. Kit? Yes. Well, so long ago, I don't see why you shouldn't know about it. I was in love with Kit. In love with her? Yeah. Did you ever tell her that you loved her? Many times. While you were married to me? Yes. Oh! And all the time, pretending she was my best friend. She was, and she still is. A better friend than you'll ever realize. I'd be married to Kit now if it hadn't been for you. She'd have married you? Yes, but she said that you... You just can't do a thing like that to your best friend. Oh, I don't believe it. You're just making it up. What happened? Nothing happened. Oh, let's not talk about it, Millie. It's all over and done with. We certainly will talk about it. I demand to know. All right. She kissed me goodbye and sent me away. Oh. I'm sorry you're disappointed, Millie. <laughs> Oh, Mother, I've been most wonderful. Oh, Mother, what's happened? The other day you asked me how I happened to let anything as nice as your father get away from me. Yes? Well, I'll tell you why. He was taken away from me, filched. Filched? And who by? By your sainted kit. Mother, have you gone mad? All these years I've asked myself what I've done to drive him away. I've searched my conduct. And all the while lurking in the shadows was that Judas who calls herself my friend. Mother, <laughs> this isn't one of your books. You're talking about father and kids. Oh, Kit. I could scream. But I could wish her no worse fate than that for which she is now headed. What does that mean? Oh, she's embarking on a little cradle snatching. That silly young boy she's been carrying on with. A bride at 42. Mother, you can't mean Rod. Who else? She was here just a few minutes ago, dribbling. You're sure of this? You're, you're telling me the truth? It's time you knew what was going on around you. Why, for months she's been carrying on with him. It's time you came out of your illusions about Kit. It's time I came out of a lot of illusions. Why? Why, Deirdre, where are you going? Out. I don't know where exactly. Oh, hello, Dee Dee. I was just about to knock. I'm sorry, I have to rush. Congratulations. What about? You and Rudd. Heaps of love. Dee Dee. I have a date with Lucian and I'm late. Bye. Come in, Kit. What's the matter with her? I'm sure I don't know. Millie, what have you been telling Deirdre? Why, nothing at all, only that you and Rudd were going to get married. Why? Why did you tell her that? I haven't even told Rudd yet. But that couldn't have upset her. Millie, what was it? You set yourself up as a paragon of virtue to that girl. I'm her mother and it's my duty to open her eyes. So that's what you told her. Why, Millie, why? You... My so-called best friend and Preston, my husband. Surely you remember that. I do distinctly. Then don't pretend you've forgotten taking him away from me, shattering my life. <laughs> Millie, you really don't believe that, and I know you don't. How oh, could I have been so blind? You coveted everything I've ever had, always. All right, Millie. I'm going to have to tell you something I hoped I'd never have to tell you. You don't care at all about having lost Preston. You care only because of me. You're jealous of me. You've always been. Of my career, the kind of life I lead, even jealous of Deirdre's affection for me. You've done some pretty bad things in your life, Millie. But telling her what you must have about Rudd and me is the worst yet. Even if you didn't care about hurting me, you might have thought what it would mean to Dee Dee to have her faith in me shaken. I'd better get out of here before I do something I'm sorry for. Yes, go. Go. And since you've taken everything else I've ever cared for in my life, you might as well take Deirdre, too, since she's so fond of you. And don't think I couldn't have many times. All right, leave me alone, all of you. But you can't take my work away from me. That, at least, is inviolate. Well, 
Why don't you go? There's just one thing I must do. That. <gasps> Harriet? My goodness, Miss Marlowe, where have you been? I've been walking for blocks. Any call? Mr. Kendall says he'll be here at 8 o'clock. Good. Harriet, a little while ago I did something I've wanted to do for years. And I feel perfectly marvelous. Well, that's fine. Harriet, would you say I was a woman who knew her own mind? Yes, indeedy. Well, I've, I've made up my mind to marry Mr. Kendall. Oh, that's fine, Miss Marlowe. That's just fine. Yes, I think it's just fine, too. I'm going to dress, Harriet. Now, put some champagne on ice and wear your black uniform. It's an occasion. Well, well, you and that nice Mr. Kendall. Kit, you look just beautiful. That's what I was hoping to hear. That champagne in the ice bucket, Rudd. Oh, better and better. Kit, really, I've never seen you look so lovely. It seems ages since I've seen you. And yet it's been only a few days. Well, Kit, here's to you. Here's to you, Rudd. Darling, I must have seemed very abrupt with you the other night. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. You were being perfectly honest, Kit. You were being perfectly right. You mean about us? Mm-hmm. I suppose a woman's intuition is better than a man's after all. Then you mean that you... you agree with me now. Is that it? Yes, yes, I do. Why, oh, I, I must admit I felt pretty awful about it then, but now I'm sure you're right. Oh, but Rudd, I... <laughs> it's funny, isn't it, how things sort of work themselves out? Rudd, what are you trying to tell me? Uh, well, uh, something's happened, Kit, which can't be any more of a surprise to you than it was to me. <laughs> Darling, nothing could surprise me today. What is it? Uh, well, I, I've fallen in love with Deirdre. Deirdre? Yes, can you believe it? Why, yes. <laughs> yes, of course I can believe it. We happened to have lunch the other day, and it suddenly seemed to hit us like... Kit, this couldn't mean anything to you, could it? Oh, I read, of course not. I, I'm i delighted for you both. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. I do feel, well, rather funny about telling you that. Oh, but you mustn't. If I'm acting peculiarly, it's only because it's been such a shock. Rudd, it's just that... Just what I meant the other night. When I said you should marry some nice young girl and settle down. Oh, thanks, Kit. Have you told her that you love her? Mm -hmm. I want her to marry me. Well, what about tonight? Uh, hadn't you planned to see her tonight? Well, her, her father's giving a party at his hotel. As a matter of fact, I, I'm supposed to meet her there. Oh, well, then I should think you'd better be going. She'll be wondering where you are. Oh, if you don't mind, Kit, I guess I should. Oh, Kit. Goodbye, darling. Kit, just to have known you, I'll always be thankful. It's been an enchanted patch we've had, Rudd. Like a spell of fine weather. Goodbye, Kit. Goodbye, darling. Harriet. Yes, ma'am? Call a cab immediately. All right. And call the Park Avenue Hotel, Mr. Preston Drake. Tell Mr. Drake that under no circumstances is he to let Mr. Kendall leave there until Miss Deirdre arrives. Do you understand, Harriet? Yes, ma'am. Well, where's Mr. Kendall? Harriet, you're looking at the biggest fool that ever lived. Oh, Miss Marlowe, don't. Harriet, in the phone book, please look up Mr. Lucian Grant's address. Mr. Lucian Grant? Yes. And if Mr. Drake should ask where Dee Dee is, tell him, tell him she's with me. Tell him not to worry. Dee Dee will be at the hotel in a little while. Kit, I'm not a child. And if I want to go to Lucian Grant's apartment, nobody's going to stop me. Nor will I always be able to guess that you're there and haul you out. You're a fine one to be interfering with my life. Deirdre... You went to Lucian's apartment because of what you heard about Rudd and me, didn't you? Well, I... Didn't you? Well, yes. I thought so. And you're in love with Rudd, aren't you? That has nothing to do with it. I don't see why you don't marry him. Because he doesn't want to marry me. And no nice woman wants to marry a man who doesn't want to marry her. But Rudd's in love with you, isn't he? He was, Dee Dee. 
he isn't anymore. You mean he just suddenly stopped? Oh, you can't say when you stop loving somebody. All you know is that you have stopped. But you haven't stopped loving him, have you? To be quite honest, no. Oh, but I shan't go on loving him forever. And if it hadn't been you, darling, it might have been someone else. And I'm happy it was you. You're so right for each other. Kit, tell me something. Was my father ever in love with you? Yes, he was. Once. Oh, Kit, I can't tell you. You're just about the most wonderful person I know. Oh, nonsense. I'm not at all. Uh, I'm dropping you off at the hotel, Dee Dee. Red's there waiting for you. You're not coming up? I think not. I'm very, very tired of youth and love and self-sacrifice. Oh, now, come on. Fix your face. You look awful. <laughs> Yes. Any calls, Harriet? Uh, no, ma'am, but Mrs. Drake. It's all right, Harriet. Millie. Well. Kit, it's hard for me to apologize. But anything I may have said today, I didn't mean it. Forget it. I know you must hate me, Kit, but if you could find it in your heart to forgive me. Of course I forgive you, Millie. I'm not even angry anymore. Thank you. Millie. How about a big glass of nice flat champagne? <laughs> Do you think I should? Oh, come on. It'll be good for both of us. Well, it's been a sort of strange day, hasn't it? That's one way of putting it. I didn't expect you back so soon. I, I thought you'd be out celebrating with Rudd. Millie, brace yourself. Yes? Rudd is getting married, but not to me. He's... Going to marry Deirdre. Deirdre? Are you joking? No, Millie. I'm not joking. Deirdre and Rod. But they don't even know each other. Or do they? Uh, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, now, don't be upset, Millie. Deirdre was bound to marry someday, and Rod couldn't be nicer. As a matter of fact, aside from Preston, Rod's the only other man I ever wanted to marry. And I'm just conceited enough to think that that means something. Well, but it wouldn't have worked out. You know that, Kit. You're probably right. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Millie, what is it? This changes everything. My new book. You see, it's about two women, friends. Practically brought up together. They have their ups and downs and finally... You mean like us? Oh, the characters are purely imaginary, but... Well, in a way, yes. Millie, you never cease to amaze me. Oh, no, me. really. It's your not marrying Rudd and both of us finding ourselves lonely. If I finish it that way, well, of all my books, it'll be the first sad ending I've ever written. Well, you've always said you wanted to write what you call an artistic flaw. Oh, but the public doesn't want a sad ending from me. Two women left all alone like this. What are you going to call it? I'm not sure. I've had several ideas... What do you think about old Lang Syne? Well, if it's about us, why not old acquaintance? Old acquaintance. Of course, Kit. Old acquaintance. Let's drink to that, Millie. Curtain falls on old acquaintance. And three old acquaintances of ours are coming forward for, for a curtain call. Miriam Hopkins, Alexis Smith, and Otto Kruger. Well, I'm very glad to be back, Mr. DeMille. Although for a few days, I didn't think I'd make it. That old devil train trouble? I was in New York and Mr. DeMille wired. Fortunately, I got the last train that had reached here in time for rehearsal. Yeah, I know what you mean. Years ago, when I was on the road with theatrical companies, I always had trouble getting to the next town. Uh. Mm. No reservations then either, huh? No money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I suffered from a slight touch of that myself in the old days. These talented youngsters like Alexis Smith who make a hit overnight, 
They, they don't know that long, hard road, Otto. Well, I'd better wait and see if I'm still around in 30 years before I say anything. Uh, I'm betting on you, Alexis. By the way, how, how much did you make in your, your first job in the theater? Nothing. It was a college show. I, I can beat that. I made $9 a week. <laughs> well, I worked for my father, so he gave me a break and paid me 10 <laughs> How about you, Miriam? Well, I made a little more. But then I don't think you could have held down the first job I had. Oh, I don't know. Well, how would you look as a ballet dancer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I always use Lux soap. So do I. <laughs> Lux has been my complexion care for years, Mr. DeMille. I wouldn't be without it. Then I guess I'm in the right company. I'm a Lux soap fan from way back. Oh, that's, uh, that's two more prize portraits in the... Lux Beauty Gallery. Got a play for next week yet, C.V.? Yes, Otto. A famous story that has now become a screen classic, too. The new 20th Century Fox picture, Jane Eyre. And our stars will be Orson Welles and Loretta Young. <laughs> <laughs> the, the novel by, by Charlotte Bronte has been read for a hundred years. The picture is a current success. And next Monday night... You will hear Loretta Young as the gallant Jane Eyre and Orson Welles repeating his fine screen performance at Edward Rochester in this immortal love story. It's always been one of my favorites, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Fine acting like yours always rates an encore. Our sponsors the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Loretta Young and Orson Welles in Jane Eyre. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, large amounts of medicines for American fighting men are literally thrown away every day. Does that startle you? As long as an ounce of waste kitchen fat is thrown away, medicine that might be made from that fat is destroyed too. Remember, on the eve of invasion, our fighting men need our help more than ever. Now is the time to redouble our effort. Keep a handy tin can near the stove and save all the waste fat in your kitchen. Your butcher will pay you four cents a pound besides giving you two red ration points. The need is urgent. The motion picture, Old Acquaintance, was made by Warner Brothers, producers of Mr. Skeffington, starring Betty Davis. This is the newest in Betty Davis' long record of Warner Brothers hits, and it opened on Broadway with a gala premiere last week. Otto Kruger will soon be seen in the RKO picture, Farewell, My Lovely. Heard in tonight's play were Robert Bailey as Rudd, Gloria Fisher as Deirdre, B. Benaderet as Miss Carter, and Charlotte Treadway as Harry. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. Three bells for three great shows. Same time, same station. Listen tomorrow night for George Burns and Gracie Allen and their guest star Betty Grable. Listen Wednesday night for Frank Sinatra singing I'll Be Seeing You. Gene Kelly will be Frank's guest. This time, Lux Time. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for the tops in entertainment. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Orson Welles and Loretta Young in Jane Eyre. Want the grandest surprise of your life? Make a cake with new Easy Mix Spry Shortening. There's no creaming, no long, tiresome beating. And you get lighter, better-tasting cakes that stay fresh longer. New Easy Mix Spry is grand for all baking and frying. Tomorrow, buy Spry at your grocer's in the same handy jar. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.